all of those that are in the room. So the aim of this talk is to show what um, we have looked at um, and how we, we use the Naples feature. Of course, it's diagnosed for a uh, forensic purpose. So everything started with the question on how could we analyze an iOS device without jailbreaking the device, with this feeling that when you jailbreak the device, something unexpected might also happen on the device. It may also lead to question in terms of the validation of your, um, your analysis. And you figure out that Apple has a feature by default on any device, whatever they are, which is called sysdiagnose. The aim of this feature is initially for deb um, debugging, analyzing the performance of the device. Uh, and it was not made initially, at least by Apple, as a way to uh, forensicate the device. Uh, and it's how we start looking at the content of the file, how we could parse, and how we could use it for uh, investigation and diagnostic issue. So this is actually the result of the work of three of us. Uh, so we had Emilia, who is unfortunately not there today, um, member of SOTU, uh, around on my slide, uh, and myself, so working for SOTU at the European Commission uh, for us. So in terms of agenda, so we start with a short problem statement, explain a bit why we start looking at it. Um, we actually started that before the press comes with some certain real cases. So it was quite interesting for us to see that it actually do work. Uh, explain a bit what this diagnose is, how we have built the tool, uh, which is actually open source, so we'll be able to download and play with it if you want. Demo a bit the result we can get and also come with what vision we envision sorry, for the future of uh, this tool and framework. So um, back to 2020, 2019, so we actually started this before Pegasus come, and we were looking at it for kind of a few months, we already had some tools and scripts here and there. When Amnesty came up with this report about um, and, uh, the Pegasus group and how they were able to infect iPhone, it was quite interesting to see that in the Amnesty report, at least in the first one, one of the ways you could detect it was actually to use this diagnose, which for us was the first confirmation that the approach makes sense. Uh, and then we had Google finding out new vulnerabilities in spyware. There was the Operation Triangle announced by Kaspersky last June, Predator two weeks ago, and we now have this um, some of the surveillance tool that is now on the market, and uh, still a need for um, for checking the integrity of the device. Um, when you when you own one, basically. So if you look a bit at the approach Amnesty took, and we believe it's important to show a bit uh, the comparison, the Amnesty report rely on uh, the artifact they have, and they come up with a tool which has two ways of working, basically, the file system dump and using an iTunes backup, which is a full copy of the user land of the device, which is already interesting for us in the sense that we, since the beginning, have um, an intent not to touch or minimize the impact on user data and try to have a look at what is happening at the operating system level, uh, also to maintain the user privacy and limit what we are touching in terms of user data there. So as I said, we started to, uh, before Pegasus. We also have corporate policies that forbid us to access personal user data, so we are quite uh, bound. Uh, we found that this diagnosis was actually a good way um, to, to dip into the device with a big but is the fact that most of the output relies on binary running of the system. So which also raises a question of how valid is the output, knowing that if at some point those binaries get interrupted, changed, hooked, whatever, it will have an impact in uh, the output you will get. We were also willing to build something which is IOC agnostic meaning that the tool provides a framework, doesn't provide an output like this device is infected. Uh, and we also consider that the jailbreaking is just our last resort option. So only when we really feel that the device might be infected, then we can go for the jailbreaking option with more intrusive tools. But that's for us really the last, uh, last piece of option. Which raises the question of the validity of this approach in terms of forensic. And most probably it's not completely okay from a forensic point of view, at least if you take it from a law enforcement point of view. Uh, if you take it from an incident response point of view, it's kind of okay if you know that you rely on binaries running on a device, that potentially the output you get might have been uh, changed. And if you look at what exists in the market in terms of commercial tools, 
most of them, when they get access to the root file system, rely on exploits, and you can have to do, come with the same question. How much can you trust those machine tools? There is no judgment there. It's just a statement that there is a balance to do when, uh, when you do instant response. You judge and you decide what is the best for your needs. Um, if you compare with the work on Nesty, the mobile version toolkit from Amnesty do support both Android and iOS. We only support Apple C diagnosis since the Apple feature only. We rely, sorry, mobile version toolkit rely on backups. So they do have user data, while we only rely on C diagnosis and we limit the, the, the amount of user data we can get, and especially private data. You will see that there are still a few, but still. Amnesty also comes with some IOC and rule embedded. We don't, so again, we have this idea of a framework. Um, Amnesty also supports sticks to IOCs to be notified. We didn't have this yet, even though you will see that one of the output we have is to put everything into time sketch, where you have super timelines, and there you can actually also search for IOC. So that's a bit of a different approach again. Uh, Amnesty obviously have this access to private user data, backup contains history of SMSs, calls, all those data, we don't, which might be a limitation. Also, by the way, if you look at the Persian Triangle, for instance, you need to have access to the SMS database, and message database. It's typically something you don't have into a C-diagnose. Uh, in our case, we had this, um, we built the framework a bit in the same way that volatility work. So a command and then modules, and you call the modules based on your need. You can call all of them if you want. You can only call one if you want again, depending on the time you have, how fast you want to go. Uh, and where you want to concentrate your effort. We also try to build something which is super easy to extend, and we'll show you how it actually do work. And we believe that you should consider it as a framework, and, uh, and again, feel free to, uh, to contribute. So if we now come to what is a pulse diagnosis, because I guess that's uh, the first interesting part. So there is actually a band page on macOS that explains what this diagnosis is. And as you can see, it contains many, many, many data. Uh, so you have spin dumps, uh, the file system information, uh, some user preference, some plist that are also preferences on macOS, logs, which is crucial, many types of logs, um, and many information about crash, battery usage, processes, uh, process tree, and so on, which is already kind of interesting if you want to see what's happening on the device. And again, you will see with some demo what you can get. The way you generate it, at least on an iPhone, you need to press uh, a combination of volume button and power button, which is a bit annoying because if you press too long, you lock the device. As soon as, well, not as soon, when you press the device for actually 250 milliseconds, so <laughs> you need to count in a way, then it starts generating the C diagnose, take about 10 minutes to generate, and if you go to settings, privacy, analytics, and improvement, then under analytic data, you will see this C diagnose file. If each time it's diagnosed on the date, and that file is actually a TGZ container that you can retrieve. And it's where all the data are. So from there, you can basically get it via all the usual means from the device. So you can use AirDrop, Teams, whatever you want. You can also get it from backups via iTunes and via also third party software, forensic software that allow to get access to the file system. Uh, so via those means, it's relatively easy and straightforward to generate and get access to the to the file. In terms of content, you will see that it contains the results of the command run on the device, um, the running processes, mounted partition, copy of the key preference file, under plist format, network and configuration history, information on our health, many log files, which for us is crucial, device diagnostic and usage overview. The issue you face, and it's typically why we build this tool, is if you start looking at the device, you will see that it contains many, many different types of files. Some of them are relatively easy to read, like ASCII files, CSV files, but then you end up with SQLite database, Unicode files, plist, which can be binary or text file, and in terms of timestamp, Apple makes different types of timestamp running from the Mac epoch, which is shifted from the Unix epoch, with all the time of timestamp. And you need to take that into account if you want to have a proper timeline at the end. And it's typically the kind of thing we do uh, in the framework. 
Um, the TGZ is a structure, as, as I said, an archive with many subfolders. So you have one with the result of the command, that's the text file. Then you have a log directory with ex many logs, including the power logs, which is basically uh, uh, all the logs from the device. Most uh, main preferences, summaries from, um, which actually contain extract from the full log with what Apple consider as interesting logs. Syst uh, again, system log archive, which are the system logs. Wi-Fi that contain network and Bluetooth information and then many, many other things. If you see a bit how it looks like, uh, we can do demo at the coffee break if you want, but basically you will see that the plist um, are typically under binary format and you need Mac with Xcode to read it easily. Uh, so it's a bit annoying if you need to play with it. You have the SQLite database if you want to look at the, um, the logs and preference of plist. It's really a preference at the um, plist that you need uh, Xcode, as I said. So that's a bit challenging. Uh, <clears throat> and actually it's where we, we had this idea of building this, uh, this framework that parse all those artifacts, unify the, the output and make something which is easy to read, uh, or at least relatively easy to read for an analyst. Okay. Thank you. Um, then I jump in. Um, so as uh, maybe quick recap, first of all, I'm not going to talk about LLMs now. <laughs> uh, uh, the second thing is, um, uh, uh, basically, there's really a lot of information there. So, for example, when you um, when you bring your phone to the Apple repair shop and the techie says, does a, does basically the, the dump or it's says diagnose, and he might say, oh, you left your phone in the sun at 50 degrees Celsius. That's there. There's lots of stuff there. The Wi-Fi networks, <clears throat> time in logs, as, as you said. So the question is like, how do we get that? Um, and it's all different, as you said. It's really like a mess. Yeah. Um, so the framework, um, while well, it's open source, you can find the URL here at, you'll have it at the end again. Um, um, please use it, extended proposals. That's why we are here and talk. And we try to keep the framework. Sorry. Should I go back? Yeah, or a quick screenshot. Um, okay. So the, the core idea is like to keep the parses and all these things really, really simple in a very uniform way so that you can easily extend that and do your own. As said, it's a framework. Um, and, uh, everything can run independently of each other. Um, the idea is like you initialize first the setup. You're basically you have a sysdiagnose dump, the tar gz file, which got copied over to your laptop. Um, you initialize the case, like you have a case, a forensic case, uh, and then you can run some parses on that, specific parses and depending on what you're interested in, which log files. And then you can run an analyzer on the, on top of that, uh, which, uh, reads the output of the parser and can do something with it. Uh, the most important one is the exporting of the timestamps into uh, a timeline. So this is how it looks. You have the in in initialization. So, um, here, um, in, in, on the left side, uh, then you have a parser, uh, maybe specialized parsers, uh, the, re the result is a JSON, and then you, that goes to an analyzer. So currently we have like 25 parsers, um, and, uh, some, some go goodies like a nice visualization for geolocation uh, of Wi-Fi networks. And the most important one is the timeliner, um, which can be imported into time scan to sketch. Um, yeah, basically here are the, the three most important Python scripts. They all have simple, very simple minus H help commands or parameters. Um, and, uh, basically it's very intuitive. Yeah? Just try it out with minus H help. Um, yeah, basically this is an example. Um, how it looks like you have, uh, you, um, initialize it first. I don't know if we can see that in the back. I, it's hard for me to see. Um, and then you, uh, run, uh, parsing.py parse, and then that specific parser, uh, that you're interested in, and then the, the analyzer. And what if you want to extend it? How to make your own parser? Basically, we have like some demo hello world parsers in there. Just read them. They're like a page in, in the editor. 
and just adapt. So you have like some description that you need to adapt, uh, the input um, and, and the, the function, the name of the function that should be called for parsing it. Um, same for the analyzer, very simple. Just copy, paste, adapt. And now we can go to a demo. Um, yeah, so, uh, sorry? Good. The next slide. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So um, we we have a, a story here. Uh, the the person is traveling, and uh, the the iPhone uh, co automatically connects to a known already known network. Um, but actually, it isn't. The, the user realizes this this didn't, didn't make sense with the location. Um, the user made a screenshot. Um, and in, well, in this case, it was the first con Wi Fi we didn't change last night. Let's say it's the Hacklu Wi Fi. Um, but yeah, it was F definitely not at Hacklu. So what can you do with that? Now the movie. Yeah, yeah. Movies to the rescue. You don't have to do a live demo. While we load the movie, I'll explain what's, uh, what basically happened. We did, we, we have, uh, we did the sister in our stump. We copied the Taji Z file over to uh, the um, uh, the laptop, and um, then ran the parser for the Wi-Fi and the analyzer for the geolocation. Yep, and we can go. And then basically we have like your home, or sort of, not really. Um, and then we take a look at where this Wi-Fi network was. So we can basically have a history, time-stamped history of Wi-Fi networks. And that, who recognizes that building here? If we zoom in, anyone? Shape, does that ring a bell? And the Hacklow network is apparently there. Um, uh, NATO headquarters. Um, yeah, that's obviously not where the Hacklow network should be. Uh, so there is something wrong. We visualize it like, you know, something didn't work out. We should investigate this device. So, can I ask you to go back? Because I don't know your laptop. Thank you. Um, good. Another demo is um, the user is nice to, to hand over his phone to somebody who needs to make a phone call. He steps back, uh, doesn't um, observe the phone for, for a couple of minutes. When he gets it back, he sees there's a weird app open. Um, <laughs> what is that app? Again, take a screenshot, do the sysdiagnose dump, um, and let's investigate that. In this case, we did the um, app installation and, um, yeah, food truck app. Yeah? And, um, sorry, that's wrong. I have to go back. Yeah, you need to do the demo, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> um, and... Um, with the dump, we can basically start to, to import it into TimeSketch, which is a really cool tool by uh, uh, Johan from, from Google. Johan Gack, again, I think is mm -hmm. his name pronounced correctly. And you can see how, how in TimeSketch you see all the events that you see in the SysDiagnose data can be um, you know investigated. So there's lots of information there. Um, basically, we, we will extract the install time of that app, and then we can go deeper afterwards. Yeah? Um, yeah, but you can see basically all the events that get exported, parsed, and exported properly into time sketch. Voila. Yeah. And we estimate this is the rough time of uh, installation, and we have like a all the paths here, uh, UUIDs, etc. So it's pretty rich. Mm -hmm. And then finally, maybe um, also interesting, um, like if if you discover strange processes um, and you want to know exactly what this this is doing. Um, then basically uh, you can do it also. You see the whole command line of the process in SysDiagnose. In this case, it would be a SSH uh, reverse shell, I believe. Yeah. So uh, you can basically then get that out from the SysDiagnose dumps. So what what is the problematic thing with this approach? Um, it is an internal tool by Apple to support the you know to to, to help tech support. That means the formats change. 
Um, the log file, uh, file contents may change. We always have to chase all these changes in different versions of iOS. Um, some logs might disappear. We don't know. Yeah. Um, the log formats are a little bit reverse engineering. Um, and yeah, it's, as I said, lots of information there. That means lots of work to actually, uh, chase everything. Um, it is for diagnostic purposes. Uh, it doesn't contain the user data. Uh, if you need that, basically you need a full device backup, um, uh, but that's, you know, outside of scope. Yeah. So, future things, do you want to talk about that? Should I? As you wish. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll hand over okay. to you then, yeah, because you... you, so, you, you <coughs> more. so, for the future, we, we already got a few feedback that was already implemented in the tool, um, but you are willing, obviously, to keep up with the change, so... We are now covering iOS 17. It do work uh, if you give a try. We actually also give a try on so iPad iOS, so iPad OS, um, and iOS do work more or less in the same way, and it works for both. We give a few try to other type of uh, Apple OSs like Watch OS or TV OSs, and clearly there it uh, it need a bit of work to to get support for those devices. But in theory, that should be feasible. They have the same kind of output and more or less the same content. Um, probably we need more analyzer. So, parsing wise, we probably get to the, the most important parser, even though we are still missing a few. Um, but in terms of analyzer, we showed, um, a vision of how we can end up with a timeline of Wi-Fi. Time sketch is probably the most important one, but there is probably also a lot of work to do with more analyzer, analyzer that do support IOC and uh, quick detection of certain threats, uh, which today is, um, is lacking a bit. And you also, and that's actually also part of, like, also a call for the, um, a call for help or a call for contribution, uh, is to also validate the effectiveness on as many as possible this diagnosis image to detect bug, but also prove, uh, the usefulness of this. Uh, <coughs> and again, it's open source, so you are definitely, definitely free to, uh, to adapt, uh, and play with it. So in terms of validating the effectiveness, um, so it's clear from the news that there are attacks on mobile device. So it's no, I was also actually a talk on that a few days ago. It's not constant for a few years. Um, so there is a clear need to validate that this tool works. Not all the limitations. So it's also clear that certain type of threats can't detect. So like this SMS things that you have for the first step of typical operation triangle, you cannot detect that with this diagnose. So it's good to know where the tool can detect and where the tool can't. Um, and we are definitely open to, uh, to test some, uh, some image under TLP Red if you have some to share. Um, but again, we definitely call, uh, all the ones that, and we will have a, a form at the end to reach us. <coughs> we would like to confirm that it works, get ID for improvement and get contribution for those who want to, to help us improving the tool and, um, and keep the tool up to date. Um, so this actually was also built on uh, some ID and discussion. So we had a few. So the initial ID come from a discussion with Sarah Edwards, who is a sense instructor. Um, you also see that some of the module were initially taken and improved from uh, a project run for, uh, by a set of sense instructor again. And then we integrated for the tool when we could, like time sketch. And uh, we had you on helping solving some issues. And um, the ST report was also super helpful. So as a reminder, uh, and I think we already said it multiple times, it's open source, uh, and the license is quite open. So that's the advantage of the European, European Union public license. It do allow a lot of usage, usage. So feel free to, to use what the license allows. And, uh, and if you want more demo and, uh, and so we can, this we have during the coffee break. So if you want to reach us, uh, you can scan the QR code that will lead you to a new survey where you can add your name and email address as well as IDs and we'd now get a list of persons that are interested <coughs> so being aware of how things evolve uh, and we definitely being the one that um, register on this form. No spam, we promise, but at least we, we will be aware of uh, evolutions and, uh, and if you're ready, you can already submit. And for the rest, you have all our email address and, uh, and the link for the tab. And if you have time for questions or any questions. Thank you very much.
Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, uh, you mentioned so uh, a number of things are not covered or just technically not possible to cover. Um, uh, maybe do you know a place where we have an overview over those that we will never be able to cover with that technique? Or <coughs> well, it's something we should add on uh, the wiki of GitHub. The thing is, the um, release the artifact we cover, but not the artifact that are not there, um, and. Syntagnos is quite well done, I guess, by Apple because they really limit the capture to what is happening at the OS level with the preference and uh, the fact that do not contain sensitive data, at least private data, like SMS and so. So typically, whatever contains communications, clear private data, it's not there. And, yeah. um, and again, if you look at, um, at the attack of uh, Operation Triangle or the first and an SMS, actually an message that trigger an exploit, uh, the only place where you can detect that is by looking at the SMS database and find message that you don't have. So uh, SMS, user data, <coughs> modified binaries directly, like somehow if they somehow managed an iOS to modify it, usually that's a root exploit or libraries or whatever, you don't find that directly. And it's, it's really diagnostic data from Apple for the tech support. But it is so rich, you find so much there. Application data in general is not there. Yeah. You find a lot of the time history. And that is already a very good indication. And if you combine it and, you know, if you have a clearer indication, then and say, oh, this really looks like a weird app installed at that time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then you can do still a full dump, for example, right? So it's like a friendly way of making, for having a first check yeah? without being too intrusive. Hope that answers the question. Okay. Hey, we have questions. That's cool. Thank you for the presentation. I have uh, one question. It's uh, in regard of the sysdiagnosis um, report. Um, so in recent company, uh, we are um, enrolling all the mobile devices into uh, MDM. And I was wondering if it's possible to... Um, generate this uh, sysdiagnose directly from the MDM? That's a good question, and we have actually the same. <laughs> so it's one of the things we are actually looking at is there is, anyway, there is nothing documented by Apple that we found. So if there is a way we didn't find anything, it's Apple documentation. We guess that, or we hope, that is that it might be feasible. If you look at uh, the watch, for instance, to trigger the sysdiagnose, you need to send a profile to the watch. So we hope that something similar exists for mobile, but so far we have no clue. So I haven't kept track of the latest uh, iOS exploits and stuff like that. So you said the six diagnose information is fundamentally untrustworthy under the assumption that the attacker has modified the binaries. But my understanding is that iOS has like an authenticated file system. So do you know for recent iOS exploits, like actual weaponized in the wild exploits, are attackers actually getting exploits at a level that they can change the binaries? Because I was under the impression that like persistence is the hard part and therefore they may not be able to actually change those. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, that was easy. <laughs> Anything else? If not, coffee is served. Hopefully some cookies too. And we will start at 4.15. Thank you very much, you two. Thank you.